Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to do something I am calling faux foil using gold scratch board. I did this scratch board piece, which was based with stamps. I used that to create it on this board and painted it with my own inks. I did a second one where I used actual scratch board inks, but also did it on that same wooden surface. And it was really fun to use the scratch board inks because I could do a second layer of scratching and get some real depth on it, which was a whole lot of fun. However, I was trying to think of how we could use this on cards because that's what most of my viewers enjoy doing. So I was looking for other products and have shopped to my heart's content. And I found this one. It's an artist quality surface. It's not as heavy, of course, as the board. It does have a little give to it, but it's not super bendy either. So it's pretty stable and it's going to work well to do some illustrations that I want to do of some animals because look at all the different kinds of fur that you can do with scratch board. I just love it. I can get all different kinds of levels of gray as well, etc. But then I found this other stuff, this other surface. It's thinner than the white one and it comes in gold and silver and bronze and rainbow and copper and who knows what else. I'll link as many colors as I could find in the doobly-doo so you can check them out. But you just scratch off the surface and it's got an ink surface on top and it's really cheap. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to do a project today using one of these dies, these abstract scene dies from Ellen Hudson. The one that I'm going to use is the sunset die or sunrise die, whichever one that one is. And the other one is a mountain one. So I'm going to use this one. I've taped it down and you can see what happens. The tape put, peels up the ink. So be aware of that. You don't want to tape something down onto the front surface unless you're prepared for the gold to come through. But I had a set of tools that I bought in my last scratch board video and they were red handled and I complained that they had, they felt cheap and they had these little plastic seams on them where they were manufactured, really itchy, kind of weird feeling. So I sanded them down and then spray painted them. I stuck them into some styrofoam that I had, some scrap stuff in the the garage and then took them out in the backyard and just spray painted them with a couple layers of spray paint. It helped a little bit, but none of those tools ended up even being very good. I didn't even like the lines that they made except for these two tools. They were really cool. This one, this brush raises and lowers with a little handle on the back of the tool itself. And then this one just has three tiny needle nibs on them. And you can make very fine hairs with both of these and get almost a gray look and then pair it with using stronger strokes from another tool to get some depth in fur like I did on that lion. But I'm going to make a different recommendation for you because most people are not going to get into it that much. You can do scratch board with an X-Acto knife. And I have these two different types of blades and you can use either one. The one on the right I tend to like more because you can get a wider stroke with it. You can get a wider line as well as just the line on the tip, but I'm going to use both of them on this project. So you can get the Royal and Langonickel engraving art packet of these sheets of paper, cut them down to card size, and then die cut whatever you want to do designs on. I mean, you can just, you know, circle punch holes in it and doodle on them with a knife. And you can see how all, you, all it does is take one stroke to scratch that ink off the surface. You do need to be a little careful with this stuff because it's not high quality. It's meant probably more for children's craft projects, even if it works really great for what we're doing. Because if you press too hard with the knife, you can scratch through to the white surface of the paper underneath. And then that ends up being a weird thing as it scratches off both of them and pills up and does weird things. But nonetheless, as long as you're careful and don't use a really heavy touch, you can get really cool patterns created from just scratching very lightly on the surface. And it's just a heck of a lot of fun to do this. You know how much I like to doodle. And this is like doodling in gold, which is fun. And I'm going to do a couple different designs on each one of the panels from the scene. So I get some layers to the scene itself. It's meant to be a sunset, but it kind of looks more like a flatter mountain range to me. <laughs> Maybe it's got a lake in it or something, that sort of thing. But 
you can do all kinds of things with that die set, inking them to make them look like clouds above water and all different kinds of stuff. So lots of fun to be had with it. And I'm just creating different types of patterns in each one of the sections. It's very relaxing to do this. It's very easy and it's inexpensive because you probably already have a, a knife of some sort in your craft stash and you can just create different patterns on these. When it came to putting the sun in here, I decided not to tape the die down because I didn't want the gold to come off. I wanted to leave the sky black. So I used a hole punch instead. So just remember, tape will peel off that color. So unless you want that peeled off, then you don't want to stick tape on top of it to hold your paper down or something. I use the side of the flatter knife to scrape off all the ink on top of the gold sun. And you can see up close just how shiny it is. And remember, you're looking at all these things very, very, very close because I'm trying to show you the detail of it. But even though it looks kind of some messy, some of my doodling, it looks really beautiful on the finished card because nobody's going to stick their eyeball as close as your eyeball got when you just looked at it on camera. To assemble it, I took a piece of scratch paper, added on some double stick tape. You could do it with either a big sheet of double stick like I have, or you can just use whatever kind of adhesive you want that's going to hold all this down. Just cover the surface with it so that each one of your pieces can fit in and then stick together. Pop in the sun. You could even put that on some dimensional adhesive too. And then it's ready to trim out around the outside. I just used my paper cutter to do that. And when that was all done, I did decide to go around with a marker to kind of knock down the white edge so that when I put it on the black card base, that didn't show. I put some dimensional adhesive under it. Isn't that gorgeous? Just so fun. It feels like foil. So obnoxiously proud of you embossed in gold. Now I did do another card over on Ellen Hudson's YouTube channel with the other of the scenic dies. This is the mountain scene and I'd use Copic airbrush, but you could also do the same kind of a thing with inks and these dies very easily. And then I did some stitching on top of it as well. So you can check that out. The link will be in the doobly doo down below so you can go watch that one. And that is it for me for today. I hope that you enjoyed this, got a little something out of it, and that you might try some of this gold fake foil process that I've discovered. And you can do it without a foil machine. All right, I will talk to you guys later. See ya.